Henry left side. Touchdown, Titans! I still believe in this group, and I believe that we'll get the state turnaround. We just got to take it one day at a time, one game at a time, find a way to get one win. We have to get things fixed. We have to figure out how to win a game. They outcoached us. They outplayed us. This one's tough to swallow. From the Bet MGM studio, this is the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Sitting in for Coach Vrabel tonight is John Robinson, Titan General Manager, as he always does on short weeks for the team. And that, of course, because we played last night in Buffalo, the Titans falling to the Bills 41-7. to Obviously, tough night. As you get on the plane, start to work, come back to Nashville, after a game like that, where do you start? Yeah, my, I mean, we're certainly all frustrated um, at how things kind of snowballed uh, there in the second half. Uh, but the message right after the game was exactly that. It's, hey, we've got a long season ahead of us. Um, we've made some plays in that game, some things that we can build off of. Let's get back to work and let's focus on getting win number one. And, you know, that's kind of been the message, you know, certainly after the game, but throughout the course of the day-to-day -day as we get ready for, uh, for the Raiders. And as you get ready for the Raiders, the things you're working on, we want to go over some of them. First of all, John, how do you get the Titans' run game started this week? Yeah, I mean, I think we've had some runs in the last two games that have been close to popping. Um, but, you know, in the run game, it's about the, the blockers hitting their landmarks, you know, getting that extra shove on a linebacker at level two to create a little bit more space. It's about Derek getting downhill on the inside runs um, and, and, and putting it on that free safety, stretching it out on the outside runs, finding a cutback seam to cut back, and they're going to break. We just got to keep building on the little things, focus on the details um, to improve. Third down conversions has been a big problem for the Titans offense to begin this season. How do you improve offensively on third down? Well, I think it, you know, when you're throwing a ball, it's, it's, it's uh, protection and separation. You know, the third medium and third shorts, uh, from a percentage wise, they give you a little bit better chance to make those. But when you're in third and long, um, sometimes those are, those are tough to pick up. We picked up a big one last night uh, on, the, on the play that, that Traylon made. Um, but it's about protecting the quarterback the receivers getting open, uh, him delivering an accurate pass and, and running with it. Let's stay with Traylon Burks for a second. The rookie already has seven catches for 102 yards. How do you keep getting him involved as he continues to grow? Yeah, I think I'm really proud of him, uh, the progress that he's made. You know, kind of got off to a slow start right after the draft, but really has built um, and, and has got some good momentum going. Um, he, we're moving him around a little bit. He's getting more comfortable seeing different types of DBs. Um, that, you know, this guy's going to cover me this way. I can attack this guy this way. Um, he's studying film. You know, I've seen his notes throughout the course of the week on the players that he's going to uh, face. Um, and, the, and the quarterback and Ryan's getting more confidence in him. So we need to continue that upward momentum and, um, and keep making plays for us. Run defense was better last night than it was in week one against the Giants. How do you continue to improve the run defense? Well, I think the biggest thing we're focusing on, on is tackling. You know, this... Uh, this group that we're playing this week with the Raiders, they've got some guys that are really good with the football in their hands. Uh, we've got to get them on the ground. You know, we've got big guys up front. We can set the edge um, with, our, with our outside linebackers. Jeffrey and those guys on the inside can build a wall. Um, but we've got to swarm. We've got to tackle and get these guys on the ground. Need big play opportunities on defense. How do those come about? It's about pressure. You know, when you can get pressure, uh, on the passer when you can force errant throws. You know, one will get tipped, which in inevitably leads to an interception. You know, the trend now in the league is hammering at the football. You see it around the league where guys are trying to punch the football out, and we worked at it at practice. We're continuing to try to stress that. 
uh, and hopefully that carries over to a game. We see it in games where we're, we're trying to hammer at the football to knock it loose, uh, to try to get a turnover uh, and, and have that big play that can really change the momentum and get the football back to our offense. First half against the Giants, great pressure on their quarterback. Last three halves, not as good in the pressure department. How do you pick that back up? Well, I think it's the games. You know, we've, we've done a really good job at the end of last year uh, running a lot of those twists, a lot of those games up front where you know, it, instead of just rushing on one guy, you're going to pick off an offensive lineman and somebody's looping underneath uh, to try to get in the face of the quarterback. Cleaning those up a little bit, we've done some good things with those, uh, but continuing to be detailed with how we execute the pass rush games. When the Mike Vrabel Show continues, John Robinson is going to help us know our foe, the Las Vegas Raiders. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, continues from the Bet MGM studio. John Robinson sitting in for the head coach on a short week, and it's time for us to know our foe, the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders are 0-2 on the season. They fell in overtime to the Cardinals 29-23. They have played clean under their new coach, Josh McDaniels. And they certainly have a dynamic duo that knows one another well. Derek Carr and Devontae Adams played pitch and catch together at Fresno State. The Raiders traded for Devontae Adams, getting him from Green Bay. And so Carr and Adams back together again. Do you already, already see the connection, John? Yeah, I think, you know, you certainly do when you watch the tape. Um, there's a familiarity there that they're just comfortable with each other. Um, Derek trusts where Devontae is going to be on the routes. Uh, Devontae anticipates the ball really well. Uh, Derek throws a good ball, uh, and Devontae is one of the top receivers in the league. So um, they're off to a pretty quick start here, you know, familiarizing themselves back to their days at Fresno. The dimension of Darren Waller, a big tight end who's incredibly athletic, just inked a new contract. Tell us about the challenges of defending Waller. Yeah, I mean, he's basically like a big receiver. I mean, he's got outstanding size. He's got a huge catch radius. Um, he's got soft, natural hands. He can go up and get it in traffic. He's a good route runner. Um, for such a taller guy, he can really drop his weight in and out of breaks to create separation, while also playing with muscle when he needs to, to get that little extra oomph to get away from the guy. Um, a guy, you know, when you couple with him with, with Renfro, with Adams, I mean, it's a formidable um, group out there. On defense, they haven't gotten the pressure from the edge yet with Max Crosby and Chandler Jones, but you got to figure it's coming. Hopefully not this Sunday. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I mean, Max Crosby, what a great story, you know, what he's overcome. But um, he's long, he's quick, he's fast, he plays with a high motor, usually rushes on the left side, but they move him around some. He's got a quick first step uh, when he stunts inside. Um, Chandler, I was in New England when we, you know, when we drafted Chandler, another really long football player um, that was able to come off the edge, bend, um, impact the set of the tackle with length and with power. You know, when you're talking Crosby uh, and Jones together, it's definitely a formidable duo there on the edges. Lots of work for the offensive line coming up on Sunday against the Las Vegas Raiders. When we come back, you'll meet Epic Western's genuine Titan. And he's a guy who takes care of things for this ball club, both on and off the field. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. An NFL team's equipment department is often the heart and soul of the ball club that nobody really knows about. So for tonight's Epic Western Genuine Titan, our Amy Wells introduces you to the man who's the head of the Titans Equipment Department. When you see the Titans practicing, you see him. When the Titans are warming up before the game, you see him. You've seen him with the quarterbacks and even at the NFL draft, and you've always wondered, who is that guy? Well, most likely that guy is Joey Barranco, the team's head equipment manager. Joey has been with the Titans since 2000. Actually, he interned with the team during 1999 training camp while he was still a student at UAB. The organization hired him full-time the following spring, working under a franchise fixture in Paul 
Haas, Nasca, Joey quickly became a staffer known for his hustle, his reliability, and his desire to always take care of everyone. Joey Barranco was number nine's number one guy, whether it was for early throwing and pregame warmups, adjustments, or anything else that McNair needed. Theirs was a friendship that everyone around the Titans knew was special, and people around the team certainly took notice. If Joey was a big deal to Steve McNair, it helped to get him noticed by everyone else. To this day, if you watch the Titans practice or warm up, Joey Barranco is with the Tennessee quarterbacks. He, ha he has a plan, his guys are where they're supposed to be, and then just dealing with the quarterbacks. He has a great snap, uh, he knows exactly what we're, what we're trying to accomplish and does a great job of, of setting us up in order to do it with all of our drills, our individual drills, setting the bags up, um, just really selflessly serving us in a way that, uh, that you couldn't ask for more. So, you know, really thankful for Joey and everything that he gives to us. And then we're going to start our pregame routine, do pat and go and all that. What about the pregame speech you're going to give me? Well, that comes later. In 2000, Joey was the young guy. Today, 20 years later, he's a wily veteran that coaches and other staff can count on for basically everything. Well, personally, uh, it means a lot. He was one of the first people that I met here uh, when I got the job. And, um, you know, he's usually always right next to me spotting the football. And um, he does a fantastic job. And now he's in charge. After the 2020 season, Joey was put over the equipment staff and leads a group of people whose dedication never wavers. Each person seems to do the work of two to three people because they love the job and they love the Tennessee Titans. Haas Noska taught that to Joey Barranco and Joey is passing it on to the new generation. He's just a good dude to be around. He works extremely hard. He, um, he takes his role very seriously. He's very locked in during practice. We sit there and we go from one team to the next. He reminds you a lot, hey, you guys have two more plays and you're back up and all this. He's just a, he's just a true pro's pro, and I think the Titans are extremely lucky to have him. It's a thankless job. I mean, they do so much behind the scenes, making sure we have the right equipment. Uh, I'm always having requests for different cleats and socks, and I mean, I'm changing up girdles and shorts every other day. We're going back there. He's always taking care of us. So uh, Joey's been a mainstay here in this Titans organization. He's in the business of taking care of the players and making sure that they have what they need from an equipment standpoint, from a practice operation standpoint, then it's, it's usually ready to go, prepared. Joey Barranco is certainly a genuine Titan. We're lucky here. We work with a lot of special people, a lot of talented and dedicated people. No one more so than Joey Barranco. No, Joey's awesome. Such a great addition to the staff. I'm fortunate that he was here when I got here. Um, you talk about a, about a guy that knows our football team, um, what pad this player likes in his pants, how he likes his jersey to fit, well, how he likes his shoes laced. He just knows all of that information. He takes care of the guys. Um, it was said several times in that video about how selfless Joey was and about putting the team first, uh, and that certainly summed up Joey. He's one of the heroes around here. When we come back, you'll meet our Wesley Mortgage community hero for this week's edition of the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift4. Stay tuned. This season, the Titans organization and our great friends at Wesley Mortgage gave fans a chance to nominate a community hero for each home game. Daryl Mackett was chosen because his organization, a Soldier's Child Foundation, helps military families cope with the tragic loss of a loved one. Mama showed me pictures of their wedding day. I can tell. I believe Daryl Mackin would be an amazing honorary recipient of the Wesley Mortgage Community Hero Award. I met Daryl Mackin, Mackin in 2015 when I joined a Soldier's Child Foundation after the loss of my military husband. My four children have received birthday presents in the mail each, each year, year since, since their our daddy's father's death. death. We have also enjoyed going to the fun camps where we've with built long-lasting friendships, lasting friendships, with, friendships other with other amazing kids just, just like, like them. Us. And now we'll be able to receive secondary and college scholarships. Daryl's foundation now serves close to 5,000 children across the United States who have lost a military parent. Our lives and so many others' lives have been completely changed because of Daryl's choice to say yes to this calling. 
we have been given hope to live out a courageous future, honor, and love from Daryl and his outstanding organization, a Soldier's, Soldier's Child, Child Foundation. Foundation. Nothing else matters to me than this sentiment, that we celebrate the children and they feel celebrated. We honor our fallen and the surviving tells us that we do. And then we give the children a hope to live out a courageous life and they are, that's it. Thank you, Daryl Mackin, and thank you, Wesley Mortgage, for making that possible. A special added feature to this week's edition of the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. When we come back, Titans and Raiders, keys to the game, next. Mike Vrabel show presented by Shift 4. Sitting in tonight for the head coach is John Robinson. Let me ask you a quick question before we jump into the Nissan Keys. It's a short week of preparation. Does it change practice very much? It does a little bit. You know, you're, you're, back, you're starting a day later. Uh, so, you know, today was a player's day off. You're taking stock of injuries and, you know, how you're going to schedule practice. Uh, Coach Vrabel does a great job uh, of mapping that week out so that the players, we can get the work in that we need on the grass, but also they can get some recoup time, you know, after playing late and get back late, you know, from a Monday night game. And part of your staff actually does the advanced scout towards the Las Vegas Raiders to get you ready more quickly. Yeah, we'll send out a pre-advance on Fridays before we leave so you can start to at least look at some of the depth charts that our upcoming opponent has. Uh, but then the full advance after they went to the game on Sunday, they'll go over that you know, tonight uh, with the coaches about what they saw you know, that you can't pick up on film during the course of the pregame and in-game uh, situations. All right, let's jump into the Nissan keys to victory over the Las Vegas Raiders. And John Robinson says, let's start with special teams. You got to be good on the perimeter, you say, for special teams units. What does that mean? Well, I think it's your gunners and it's your vice guys. You know, those, the, the punt situations, uh, they're so critical with, with field position. Uh, so we've got to do a good job at, at beating their guys, um, our gunners beating their guys, trying to get down there, uh, force a fair catch, force a fumble, whatever it may be. Uh, and conversely, our vice guys holding up their gunners uh, so that we can get the ball moved, fall off the field. So the perimeter of those special teams units are going to be key for us this week. Key number two has to do with offense, and it's about protection. We talked about it at the at the. Uh, second period in the know your foe, and that's those outside edge guys for the Raiders. Yeah, I mean they they send a lot of pressure. You know they'll they'll send some five man pressure. Well, they'll they'll blitz a, a nickel or a safety or something kind of off the edge. Um, but it's Max, it's Chandler. They'll move some of those guys on the interior a little bit with gap shifts and stuff. Uh, so we've got to do a really good job of being firm in the pocket, um, blocking those guys inside out so that we can throw from it. If you're working on their roster, you see the interior guys on their defensive line are huge. Yeah, big men. Yeah, big men. Billings is in there. He's three bills plus. Hankins plays in there. He's 340. Um, Bilal Nichols, he, they came over from Chicago. He's a longer player. Um, but all of those guys are really, really big in there. All right, so let's look at the defensive key, which is key number three in the Nissan Keys to Victory from John Robinson, and that is understand the versatility they have in their offensive personnel. Yeah, you know, we touched on it a little bit with Devontae Adams coming over. Uh, Hunter Renfro was a pro bowler there as a slot receiver. Uh, Darren Waller, um, the tight end, we talked about him. Mac Hollins comes over. He's a big vertical, um, you know, Derek will shoot the ball downfield to him some, you know, to try to stretch the defense. But all of those guys have different skill sets. Uh, knowing what their skill sets are, knowing where they like to run their routes, and, and trying to put our scheme together and our players utilizing the scheme uh, to help them defend those guys. Recognition is such a big thing, particularly in the secondary where you're playing a ton of young guys right now. It is, yeah. The, the, the quicker we can get on the same call or get on the same check um, so that we can be in the right coverage, um, it allows you to execute the scheme that's called and defend those guys with their different skill sets. Your game with the Raiders at Nissan Stadium on Sunday is at noon. Are you thankful for a noon game? It, it, that we've had a lot of those historically. I mean, you like playing at night, you're on prime time. We had the afternoon game against the Giants, but you know, it'd be good to get in at Nissan at noon. Uh, it'll be you know, loud, hopefully it'll be a nice day for us. 
Our fans have been great and looking forward to, uh, to getting in there and, and putting on a show for them. And getting back into the AFC where you were this past Monday night, playing a Raiders team that you haven't played in three years, but you've certainly seen a lot of them taking on your opponents. Somewhat of a familiar foe. Yeah, you know those personnel guys um, that, that, that they're playing with over there. You've seen some common opponents uh, in the AFC that we've played you know, year in and year out. Uh, so having familiarity with those guys, and it's interesting the styles of play that New England and Josh has kind of brought Coach McDaniels into that offense and what he's trying to integrate there with our football team. Great job. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. John Robinson sitting in with us tonight on the Mike Vrabel Show for the head coach. Titans and the Raiders coming up this Sunday at noon at Nissan Stadium. For the general manager, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift Forward.